What's happening guys, it's Sir William and today we're at Overland Expo East. I'm gonna do something a little bit different. As you guys may know, the last expos that I've been to, I walked around and showed the vendors. I think pretty much all the same vendors are gonna be here. I'll point out some of the new ones, but what I really wanna see today is the rigs that folks have driven here from all over the place. Big rigs, small rigs, fancy rigs, homemade rigs, all the above and i want to talk to the people that drive them to see what their story is so let's go check it out here with overland pioneers jeremiah at the x venture trailer booth here's the best part about hanging out with these guys right here every time i see jeremiah we get cases full of country boy brewing now i'm not a craft beer fan as you guys may know but this beer right here is on point he told me to go put some in the cooler the only thing is is i think that you need some sort of special like cooler to put this thing in because as you can see he rips hard with that snowmaster so only high quality coolers for high quality beer you know what i mean i feel like it's justifiable to drink beer at 11 o'clock a.m only only if it's free beer. <laughs> So unfortunately, um, we purchased it in Utah when we were at Moab, and the gentleman, he built it, um, and then he just wasn't camping, or changed the style of camping, and we bought it. Nice. So, and then Bob's built, but he did build all the shelves inside, and uh, put in the um, fridge, and so yes, he, he did everything inside. Very cool. And how many nights have you spent in it? I would say at least 45, 50 nights. Perfect. That's yeah. awesome. Different rooftop tent on it back then. Yeah, how do you like the bun top or bundu top? Uh, I'm old enough now that I appreciate just pushing the button. Because <laughs> <laughs> he had one like that one. The fold out ones. Yeah, the fold and that's the reason why he bought it. Yeah. Because it's just easy. Sweet. Easy, I like easy. it. No, not everywhere. Some of the most important trips we made here and yeah, here, all right, South well, America. And then this one, this blue one, is that what we made and we are making now because we're just here now. And it will be made all through the Arctic Ocean. And then we are, after this, we're gonna ship our car to Europe. And after that, we're gonna send it to Africa and make a kind of to Moscow and now East Europe and probably three years about it. And I'm jealous. Now, <laughs> till now no, in this, this blue trip here, we made 4,000 uh, miles, 40,000. 40, 40,000, 40, I was about to say. 40,000 miles. And what year, this is a Kia Sportage? Kia yeah, Sportage is a 2000 diesel. Two th oh, it's a diesel. Yeah, it's a it's diesel. diesel. So this is an imported car then? No, they're no, in Brazil. It's Brazilian. Yeah, no. It, yeah. This one was the last year that it was imported from Korea to Brazil. And then from then on in Brazil, they started to mount it in Brazil. But this 2000 was the last one that they brought from Korea. They brought, it's very different because they brought from Korea to Chile, Chile and they came driving from Chile to Brazil they did not put in in in, in a container or anything no they, they came drive driving it. all the cars to Brazil till now then after that they so went. when you buy this car in Brazil it's yeah. got miles on it yeah now yeah. it has 30 350 thousand miles 350 thousand miles yeah, on your on your Kia yeah. yeah unbelievable and you guys take it all across the world yes yeah. and you'll continue to do that yes and in all those trips <laughs> we used to make when we are traveling with our kids and now we are retired so we can make uh, a, a kind of different a, trips kind of with different. other kids that's why yeah. we call us viaje familia because viaje familia means 
trip. Tra family, family, family trip. trip. But now we're only in two. We are married it's 30 also. years. It's yeah. okay for us. <laughs> that is fantastic. Our kids are, are, are working. Uh, this, Someone has somebody to work, has so. to work. And <laughs> we now, we worked a lot. We retired. And now we are going up for the world and travel by ourselves. With we our well, good for you guys. We have our oven here with all the flavors and everything to cook. So you got a little kitchen that you built? Looks like it's hand built too, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah, we made it all. Yeah, we have a fridge, and the, the guys can find us here and in, in these here. And we have a, a refridge here, electric and water shower, everything that the big rigs have, we have in the little rig. Yeah? Have a shower? It's cold, cold but, shower, but it's, okay. it's sunlight, better than nothing. So, where's your favorite place that you've been to in the United States so far? In the United, oh, States. United States. We were in Alaska. I, I, I love Alaska. Alaska. Yeah. I love Crater Lake. I love Bryce. Bryce, Bryce is Canyon. wonderful. Utah is wonderful. You, Montana Utah. is wonderful. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. different to say because it's, all yeah. places. Are, Every place has got its, it's own it's different, different beauty. It's different. That's yeah. right. And That's right. And I think that the West Coast is more, you more, more cool. Mm. Here is more rush, Humid. a yeah. lot of, of traffic and a lot of yeah. people. Oh, you're saying the people. Yeah, yeah. The, people. Yeah. The, the people are more, more cool, cool at the uh, West yeah, Coast. I, I would agree with that. Think more about the money yeah. and... They, they work hard and they are like, you know, they looking at the... the they yeah, are the kind of losing, enjoying life. Yeah. And you, I think life is very short and you have to enjoy yeah. life now. Amen. Don't let, let it to some days or some years. Do it now. Do it yeah. now. I agree with that 100%. But it was really nice to meet U.S. as people are really... People are a lot nicer than what you think yeah, they're going to be. Because if you are in Brazil, the only thing that you know it's about fast food and a lot of malls We're and not a lot information of shopping about it. <laughs> and let's go to New York and, and let's Disneyland, go to Disneyland and Epcot Center and, you know, and two of the places I avoid. <laughs> yeah, we're not being there. Yeah. Yeah. We're, not we're not going, going there going because there. Yeah. US has so many beauties to see and we that you don't need to go there. We were searching national parks and it was like a, a, a good a good trip. You Fantastic. Know? And yeah. make that annual pass Oh, it is it's a must. Every yeah. cent. Eighty bucks. Every it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Yeah. We made really more than nice. twenty-five national parks for now, and it's paid. Fantastic. Yeah, well, that's nice. awesome, and great journeys to you guys. Thank Good you luck on much. all your Thank journeys. You for everything. And follow these guys on Facebook. Uh, it's yeah. yeah. There you go. Right there. Boom. Yeah. Awesome. And they're from Brazil. They're traveling all over the place. Got to check them out. I can't imagine how many nights have been spent oh, inside of, of that route. All of them. <laughs> till now, till yesterday. Yesterday, we've completed nine, nine months. months on the road. Nine months on the on road this. in a Kia Sportage with 350,000 miles. <laughs> Guys, you do not need all of the high-end equipment to go do this. I'm telling you, just get out there and go. These folks get it. So what year is it? 2015. 2015? Yes. And what's the furthest you've been with it? Oof. Uh, let's say mid-state New York. Yeah? From Florida. From Florida. Sweet. And how many nights have you spent in it? I couldn't tell you a number. <laughs> <laughs> Enough to forget. So yep. that's awesome. You got a cool little 270 awning on it. Looks like you got a swing out tire carrier with some additional gas. Uh, you got a PVC pipe. What's in the PVC pipe? Oh, that's to carry the legs for the awning. Sweet. Okay. All right. And then you got, is that a custom built rack or is it a rhino rack? Or? That is a rhino rack. Rhino rack. Pretty neat. Is it lifted? Yes. It's lifted three and a half inches. Yeah. Cool, man. And where can they find you at? Um, I'm on Instagram. Sir Psycho Subi. Sweet. All right, so I'm here with Derek. You guys know that I have a sweet spot for K5 Blazers, and he's got, looks like an old military K5 Blazer. Yes, the Cut V. And you got it uh, four months ago. You're in the Navy, yeah. stationed in Virginia. When I said they get okay gas, I got average about 18, 19 miles gallon. That's not bad. Mountains. Yeah. I mean, so now is this the diesel one? Yes. yes so it's non-turbo diesel, right? Non-turbo diesel with a 6.2 liter. So you're not pulling your hats off of heads, but you're no. you're going places where you yeah. need to go. That's correct. Now this is 24 volt system, not yes. 12 volt system, right? Well, only the ignition system is 24 volts. Everything else is 12. 
Oh, okay, so, yeah, okay. It's, it's a very, a lot of people do the, the relay starter mod and convert that to 12, but. Yeah. Well, this is a sweet um, rig and you got it set up. You're just sleeping in the back, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got these little outdoor cushions that, that, that fold up to a lounge chair kind of like deal. Yeah. It's um, exactly what I like to see, man. You know, that is awesome. It's in progress, you know. So, That's part of the fun of this entire hobby is the fact yes. that it stays in progress. Absolutely. <laughs> I try to play with some different plants and leaves, you know. Yeah. If I don't like it, I just go back over and green. There you go. Like green chalkboard for me. That's awesome, man. I call this uh, my green machine. Green machine. Yeah. I like it. I yeah, like Jason. it. Jason has a homemade... I guess a homemade trailer that he's made and what is this trailer called we're not real sure yeah it's just a, the, the company name's uh, modular outdoors okay so uh it's just a start up uh this this started out uh, about four years ago uh me trying to find something where we could carry all of our camping gear our canoes kayaks all that stuff just keep everything in one spot so we can uh just go and enjoy ourselves and come back and button it up and then take off again um, so I didn't want to pay like 1500 bucks for an enclosed trailer so I've spent uh, considerably more um, doing this <laughs> so but uh, yeah we built it from the ground up um, it's got a few uh, it's got a few uh, pretty unique features as far as the roof um, is elevating that the roof actually comes all the way down and it closes these back doors to keep this uh, uh, theft proof or whatever um, yeah those are solid not. doors too and when it comes down I would imagine it sits extremely low right there at the midpoint there right here yeah yeah oh, this perfect is, uh, and we could do a, a, a video of that later uh, the all the awnings um, they all come down and fully enclosed you can see how they how everything slides down behind this box with the use of uh, UHMW um, and uh, it's just a pretty awesome unit. I uh, I call it the most functional 30 square foot you're gonna find. We yeah, I see your kitchen set up over here. I mean, yeah. the, the work area you have is set up perfect. You've got yeah. your burners, you've got your sink, you've got your drawers, and it allows for really good transitional space right there, just right. to the right, to the left, and you don't have to worry about getting frustrated with things out of place, right? Exactly. And the use of these uh, toolboxes, that's a thousand pound capacity. So. Who's going to put a thousand pounds of stuff in there? But it works out perfect. I can lock them uh, for travel. Uh, we got a three-way fridge, uh, eighteen gallon water tank underneath the sink. It's, it's functional. Been, it's a it's highly functional. Yeah. And the use of the uh, the you got a rooftop the, uh, tent on top there. Got a rooftop tent which we just added, and uh, tonight will be our third night in that tent, and we slept uh, super good. Sweet. Uh, every night. So it's just uh, it's just something that we are just super pumped up about i got a couple other things okay the, the housing does slide on the trailer um, as you can see with the use of this to adjust your payload for your tongue weight so you don't get the shifty trailer wow uh, okay if, if, you know i've had it you can put a quad up front or whatever so uh and then it is completely removable from the trailer Wow. So it just kind of keeps on going. It's kind so of your trailer, I mean, it's a modular trailer. Fantastic. So I can take this off. I can put an ATV on the back, go take it out for the weekend. Or you can fully stock this and go drop it in the back country when you can get there and leave it and have it ready to go whenever you come up. Man, that's fantastic. So, uh, it's just. Uh, I like it, the idea of the modular system. Yeah. I think that's what's so great about it. So really cool, man. Yeah, thank you for thanks for looking at it, and yeah, check out our uh, Facebook page. It's pretty new. Yeah, modular outdoors, right? Modular outdoors. Yeah. All right, modular fantastic. Outdoors. Well, thanks. So this is Dean. Dean's putting his hater blockers on right now, and he's gonna show us this awesome trailer. Right and here. how far have you taken this trailer? This trailer has been up and down the East Coast. It's been out uh, as far away as uh, Arizona, Utah, New Mexico, uh, Colorado. Uh, it started off. It's a M101 three quarter ton military trailer with a truck cap I got off Craigslist for nice. $50. Awesome. Uh, the guy used to haul goats with it. So like first couple nights, it's no a little bit once you air it out, it's fine. Um, but it's basically, it's a contractor's cap. So, you know, you can open it up. Um, when I did my first trip, I had $1,500 into it. Um, it runs a 
Jeep width, uh, 3,500 pound axle, same bolt pattern as the Jeep. And then- uh, Do you the tow it with a Jeep? Yeah. Okay. Normally it's a 2004 LJ. Okay. Um, and then the bed frame I built myself, it's all three quarter inch ply, pocket hole screwed together. Uh, I think there's 164 screws in it. Wow, so um, it's not shifting, shaking, nope. rattling, nope. doing anything like and, that. And, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a hefty gentleman. You're so sleeping I, on top of it. Sleeping on top of it. This storage cubby goes full length, so I have an easy up in there because I used to use that before the awnings yep. and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then the Pelican case, the kitchen goes here. There's three more cubbies down the other side. So you've got your kitchen set up yep. in the Pelican case. Yep. Perfect. And then with the scottle, I could pick it up and go if someone wants to have a party somewhere else or... That's awesome. You know, and then uh, the first trip I had my own awning that I made myself. And then each year it's like I got the ARB room and now I've got the bat wing. So it just kind of evolved from there. Um, yeah, I've noticed you got the thing outfitted pretty good with yeah. awnings. Yeah, and it does well. I mean, it's right now it's set up in road trip mode because my Jeep's in the shop and uh, I'm towing it behind a Grand Cherokee. So she sits low right now, but um, I can switch the axle back to being spring under, throw 33s on it, and it'll go anywhere. Yeah, so I, I mean, I bought the trailer for 500 bucks. The cap was 50 bucks. I painted it in my driveway. <laughs> um, I mean, you, you're talking unique low buck. Yeah, this is it. That's it, man. And, That's what uh, I wanted to see. Well, that yeah. is fantastic. Yep. And the, uh, the, the most important part is you use it. I do. And it looks like you use it, which yep. that is awesome. Yeah. Well, hey, man, I appreciate you taking Definitely. the time to uh, show us around your trailer. And uh, where can they find you at on Instagram, so, Facebook, or all that? Instagram, Facebook, blog, East Coast Overland Adventures. Just started a podcast called Echoes of Adventure. Awesome, and they can find you on East Coast Overland Adventures. Yep. Just Google it, and yep, right it'll pop there. up. East Fantastic. Coast Overland Adventures. Well, I appreciate it, man. Definitely. for cool unusual rigs with stories behind them i found probably one of the cooler trailers i've ever seen for sure and this is victoria and her her husband and two children, two children. are all traveling now we had a runaway wagon yeah. so how long did it take you to complete the trailer about a year and a half about a year and a half yeah from planning collecting all all the wood because 80% of it is recycled. Recycled wood, okay, yeah. cool. So my entire garage and backyard was just full. Of wood? Of wood, ideas, uh, metal, stuff. Yeah. That, ideas that never made it anywhere. Wow, so now take me through the process of what, what made you want to design and build your own trailer. Um, we're actually just talking about this to remember yeah. where we came from, like what, how this all started. And it was um, a trip to Cuba that we went on to visit O'Neill's family. And when we came back, had that drive inside us to travel. Yep. We wanted to just travel, get out as much as possible and to think how do we do it. Um, I was actually pregnant with my our second child at the time. So we're like, let's do this. Now how he came up with this in the middle of the night, the sketches, was kind of unreal. Um, so he can, I thought he was absolutely out of his mind. I thought right. he was nuts. Like, what? what is this? He knew the dimensions and everything. And, you know, I don't know how he brought it. He drew it up on napkins, right? Yes, on napkins. <laughs> literally on napkins. Did you really? You yeah, drew it up on napkins? That's awesome. Yeah. We started trying to figure out what was the cheapest way to fit the entire family. Yeah. Again, she was pregnant. We looked into uh, tents, rooftop tents. And rooftop tent was like too much money. Yeah. And then we ended up, uh, I did some research online and I found another, uh, uh, a, a guy out of Maine, I believe, uh, alive outside. And he had the same trailer, uh, M105. And um, he said he got it for free. So I went online and said, hey, you got it for free. What's going on with this particular uh, M105 unit? And I went online, I found them, they're really cheap if you can get them in a military auction. Mm -hmm. And I got this one for 500 bucks. Perfect. Um, and then, again, once I did all the numbers and I put the little sketches, the uh, the float plan, it was 
six by nine. You, we had just talked about, you know, finding, discovering ways to travel. Right. But we didn't actually talk about, we never went camping before. Right. So this was literally from nothing to That's this. awesome. Yeah, I love no it. No camping. Yeah. Like, for, so okay. it's a learning experience, I feel sure. I'm always tinkering with mine to find where's the perfect place for everything. And, mm -hmm. and I feel like that's... I think that's half of this sport, right? Is just trying to figure out what's the best possible solution. Correct. And I feel sure you probably feel that you haven't found the perfect solution. But in my mind, I'm thinking this is the perfect solution to get the whole entire family out traveling, like what you guys said, mm -hmm. on a budget. So what is the total cost that you would say is tied up into this? My mom um, is out of control. Under $6,000. The M105 trailer correct then we've got the uh we got some shovel mounts that also look like you just use some conduit holders there yes perfect correct. perfect and then you've got uh you got your jerry can oh, well shower. there yeah. are they're actually uh toolboxes oh these are toolboxes they're garbage uh they won't hold anything so this is a gutter spray painted and then that it that holds all my uh all my gear and stuff like that excellent on this side i have another one on the other side and it's also a toolbox so it's just a cut up and jerry can that's pretty cool that's pretty much it with a gutter inside yeah. and then what do we have up front here looks this. like we have some power solution going on yeah so this mess yeah so how many batteries do you have two two batteries yes and you got a little inverter there and that's ice, ice? yeah After three days. three days all yeah. ice wow so we keep uh milk and stuff for the kids on that side not a yeah. yeti came with it for free right 25 bucks 25 bucks that's free yeah it's free yeah might as well be. And yeah you get three days ice out of it three, that's all you days. need that's all you yeah need. you can find ice in three days yeah yeah beyond uh, that is a simple setup here nice um when i'm running the uh inverter i basically twist the cable and plug it in and when and i'm whenever i'm plugged in yeah i just unplug it twist it and plug into a regular house uh that's really cool trip. And then you got a little awning here to keep it all from getting too bad under the water. Well, well um, yes. Well, this is a kind oh, of wind, a wind okay. deflector, but from the inside is a shelf where we keep the kids' toys, books. Oh, and perfect. Stuff like that. So it's, it's got a whole lot of different uses to it. Correct. Sweet. Um, yeah. And then up top here, you've got it looks like a material, like a vinyl type material, but it's see through, right? Correct. So a buddy of mine um, came up with this idea because what happened is when we are traveling the roof goes down comes down 16 inches okay so you pull it down yeah and then uh i said one of my friends uh, was like well why don't you put this this yeah. way you can see all the way around absolutely um i like it yeah one of the crazy ideas like well what if i, I want to put a, a camera in the front yeah and i was like no nah, this is better this is way better this is a flip down um attic ladder oh yeah. from a house from a house nice yeah. reinforced yeah this came out of a uh a 1940 school that we were working on and um she loved the uh, how the paint so cracked like this yeah and looks great we tried to maintain as much yeah. as so well so when we're traveling like i was saying we flip down and then this hey buddy so this panel here pops out mm -hmm. and then the roof comes down and then the whole thing is 16 inches uh lower that's excellent yeah, and what did you say that you used to pop yeah, it up? So I have four uh, eBay spiral uh, things, actuators, electric yeah. actuators. You just got those off eBay. Yeah, uh, I think like thirty dollars a piece or fifty dollars a piece. Interesting. And then, but the problem is because they're very cheap, they're now all synchronized. So you got to put kill switches on them. You know, when we're traveling, they go up, and then when we park, they come down and a little netting, so they don't fall out. Perfect. Yeah, if they fill out, they'd fall right on top of you guys. Wouldn't yeah, they? yeah. And solar's right here. Not oh, okay. Working. How much solar? 180, uh, two solar panels, one each eye, 180 watts. Each? No, 180. Uh, 90, oh, 80, each. 90 each. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. And, uh, and you got a cool little kitchen idea over here because it just looks simple. It's yeah, just a it's nice a live bucket. H. Uh, I believe it's a old maple. igloo down there. Yeah, it's a simple, nothing fancy. Fantastic. And, um, that's our uh and porta potty yeah and then we have here our diesel heater oh you got a diesel heater yeah and then we pump fuel from the outside this way we don't bring any diesel in here um just one liter probably lasts about five days 
Um, the best part was being able to give new life to all these old things. We've upcycled everything. Yeah, that's what's yeah. really cool about it, yeah, for sure. So it definitely kept costs down, but also like environmentally friendly. Yep. And then it was at our own pace because doing this, you know, over a year and a half, say a little, a little over a year. Um, yeah. That was the pace. Like as we found things, we could just then do it. And for sure. Like that's okay. That's the project we'll work on next, and then do this and. So we just were so fortunate to be finding things along the way that we just incorporated really into cool. it. But somehow he had the vision to like <laughs> put it all when, together. When he came home with just the just the body of this thing, and I'm like, what are we gonna do with that? What is That's that? That's funny. I have pictures of just. I was. Should have got pictures of her face whenever yes. you came home with it. Probably. I think he was seven months pregnant. And, and I was like, oh, what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. What is this? So where's the where's the furthest or coolest place that you've taken it so far? Probably this place. This Probably is here. Place yeah, and where are you guys from? Uh, Northern Jersey. Northern Jersey. Okay, cool. And where can everybody find you at online? Yeah, it's uh, DIY M105 uh, Camper. DIY M105 Camper. Yeah. All right, perfect. Yeah. Well, check these guys out. They got a family of four here. They're traveling around in their homemade camper. I feel sure that they're going to come up with all sorts of cool adventures later on down the road. So check them out. Hey, guys, thanks a lot. I really Thank appreciate so it. Hey, and it was nice so meeting much, you. Well, it's and it's good you. seeing you guys out here doing this. So without a doubt, walking around Expo East is certainly fun, but with the help of Upco bikes, I was able to tool around a whole lot quicker and save my feet from fatigue. Check out these bikes. It's a two-wheel drive bike. It goes up to 30 miles an hour, up to 75 mile range. And they've got other options aside from just the two-wheel drive. They also got a really cool 50 mile an hour free ride bike. This is Robin with Upco, which stands for Utility Bike Company. Perfect. And tell me a little bit about the two by two Ubco dual electric drive bike. All right, so it's an all electric two wheel drive bike. You've got two electric motors in the hub, so you've got a one kilowatt motor in the front, one kilowatt motor in the rear. You've got your battery, which is your heart and soul of the beast, in the center. That's a 50 volt, 48 amp hour battery. That not only powers the bikes, but it also can power your electronics to a 12 volt converter and through a two USB ports. You can also charge the battery in the bike, or you can take the battery out of the bike with a Velcro strap, lift the seat up, and this pulls and slides right out of the bike. You can take that and charge that inside as well. The, the two-wheel drive, how does that even work? Because obviously there's no shafts or anything like that. Right, so because they're hub motors, the motors are actually located inside the wheels and uses the spokes to drive the rim, which drives the bike. So you've got two motors, you have got one battery, but you've got an ECU inside the center console, and then you've got two motor controllers that drive the, the motors independently of each other. So there's no mechanical connection that connects them. If one were to fail, you've got a redundant system, you've got the other one as a backup, and they're both throwing equal power 100% of the time. So you've always got one of the, both of the wheels driving the machine. It's literally drive by wire. It, it literally is. And so you've got um, exceptional traction in mud and snow. And because you're driving both wheels at the same time, it's actually easier on the trail system. So it's not tearing up the trails because you're hmm. distributing the, the driving. Force. Perfect. If you look at like the construction of the all aluminum 7000 series frame, look at the steering head. So this wasn't a motorcycle that we took and added two wheel drive to it. This was two wheel drive from the drawing board to the production floor. So this is a very robust steering neck that can handle not only stopping forces, but also driving forces as well, because you've got equal play there. And I understand this one took a little bit of a lick on the front end of a truck and it's still ticking. Still yep. good to go. Yep, it's built very robustly. So it, uh, it was born over in New Zealand and tested on dairy farms, which is a very muddy, slick, uh, harsh environment. So okay. we tested it there for many years. We brought it over here a couple of years ago. And uh, the frame is all uh, tubular aluminum. And we've got these accessory lugs all over the bike. So you can wow. install any of our accessories. And on the back side of these accessory lugs, there's an indention for a lock nut and so you can install all the accessories with just one tool instead of two tools so it's very perfect easy, very easy to install accessories easy to maintain the bike as well now show me some of your accessories that you have on yeah. this one over here so over here we've got the front deck uh, cargo deck on this one and this is just a ram off the shelf ram mount for your cell phone yep and you've got an optional rear cargo deck as well. This one has the rear pannier bags on it. So, and these are quick detach, very lightweight, so you can take your gear 
with you and oh, wow. inside. And then we also have the digital camo. I saw that on down there. Well. That looks cool, huh? Yep. And that's really just for a little bit of uh, aesthetic. aesthetics. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, tell me, what does somebody get into one of these for? So these retail for $69.99. The accessories you can add later if you want. They yep. come with a one year warranty on the machine and a two year warranty on the battery. Speaking of the battery, those are Panasonic 18650 cells. They're automotive grade. Just like the quality. Tesla. Just yeah. like the Tesla. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. Yep. And we've even had some customers that go uh, buy a spare battery and they'll put that at a waypoint or a separate location so when they get to where they're riding they can swap out for a fresh battery or have one on charge while they're riding. They can come back and swap the battery out. Battery swaps out in about 30 seconds, so it's very, very, nice. very quick. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, man, I really appreciate it. Where can they find you at? You can find us online at www.upcous.com. Um, we also have a New Zealand site as well. You can check us out there online as well. Sweet. And you guys, I, I just met one of your dealers here, Crawler Works. He, he said he just signed up as a dealer. Yep. Yeah. You guys are getting more and more dealers all across the U.S.? Yeah, we are. We're up to about 43 dealers nationwide right now, 110 internationally. And uh, Crawler Works is one of our premier dealers. They're very active. And um, they come from the world of uh, building trucks and overland, so they have a lot of experience in this realm. Well, that's cool, man. Well, listen, I really appreciate you taking the time to show us. And uh, they can go to ubcobikes.com, right? That's right. Upco All right, fantastic. And they can find a dealer there as well. Yeah, absolutely. We have a dealer locator. You can go in there and put in your city or your zip code, and uh, it'll find the closest dealer for you. Sweet, man. Well, I appreciate it, Robin. Yep. Like I said, thank you so thank much. Thank you again. <laughs>
that's kind of how I do mine too. So I like it. I like it's it a lot. Amazon lights. These are my ditch lights in the back. Oh, that's a good spot for them. It actually, when you're coming around switchback, yeah. it's nice that you can see what's right outside your door. Yep. Rather than having them on a pod Just forward. On, your, on your hood. Well, when you put them on the hood, you can't, you can't see, see where you need them to be. Which is what you need they a ditch the, light for. Right. They show that if they're on your hood, they yeah. show the ditch in front of you. Yeah. But when you're like, we went into uh, George Washington Jefferson in Virginia. Mm -hmm. And when you're coming across the switchbacks where a creek grows mm -hmm. through, it washes out. And you need to be able to see that. Yeah. It was so nice to be able to see what your front tires were going to go into before yeah. you got there. Yeah. That's really cool, man. Well, I, I think your rig's really cool. It looks like you've been using it. Uh, tell me, it. yeah, what is the coolest trip that you've been on with it, the coolest place you've taken with it, or the longest time you've spent in it? I've been in it for a little over a week. I am a weekend warrior. Work 9 to 5. Wife works 9 to 5. So we do what we can. But uh, I had a great time down in the Pine Barrens in New Jersey. Oh, okay. We went down. OK Four Wheel Drive hosted us. I was with Overland Bound as a director. Um, OK Four Wheel Drive hosted us for one night. We went in, did a tour of their facility, did a tour of their warehouse, and then we went on to the Pine Barrens. Very cool. Great time, had uh, 30 rigs, and it's just, it's cool to see different, check out different places. Yeah. Get out there, you travel two hours, it's not that far. Yep. Two hours in every direction, you can find some cool stuff. Cool, man. Well, we appreciate you taking the time. And where can they find you at? Uh, TheAdventureLog.com. The Adventure Log on Facebook, Instagram. Backroad Ventures, Facebook, Instagram. Empire State Overland, Facebook and Instagram. And Sir William Goes. I probably have the most modified 2019 Lexus in the country. It's 2019. Yeah. And you scored some stupid high points. Mid Atlantic in mid-atlantic <laughs> yes we got a nine yep. now what is a stock lexus gonna give you in that same test i have no three, idea three three okay <laughs> actually a stock lexus wouldn't make it through the challenge course yeah huh it wouldn't i scored a seven with a six inch lift with this yep different spotter so that comes into play right but ryan from back road ventures was spotting him walked yeah. him right through got a nine in all the, the comforts of a lexus four wheels on the ground the entire time and impressive. with IFS, that's impressive. That's impressive, yeah. yeah. Now, you have KDSS on this. We do. Right, yeah. Yep. So one of the reasons that I was drawn to it is because you can tell that this is highly modified. I mean, yeah. check it well, out you know right what here. what stock Lexus looks like. Yep. Yeah, stock there. Lexus goes all the way down. And folks, they don't even make an ARB bumper for this thing yet. No, they do not. Yeah. So this is off of a Prado 150 bumper. That's where that is. So it's from overseas. Sweet. Back bumper is the same way. Uh, Had to this modify is actually it. Metal tech. Okay. It's a metal tech rear bumper. I think uh, they'll tell you it's good up to a 2013, but you know it was fit on a 2019. There's a little more modification needed. Yeah, that's really cool, man. So what's the coolest place you've taken it so far? Um, so we picked this truck up uh, after it was done being built. Uh, it went in for build uh, around January this year. It took four months to build. Um, and we picked it up, and the day after we picked it up, we drove it to the Arctic Ocean in Alaska. That's awesome. Yeah. And where'd you pick it up at? Uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Uh, Mainline Overland built this. Oh, Mainline. Okay. Um, and, uh, we literally picked it up, and we put uh, we had 13,000 miles worth in it. That's awesome, man. Well, that's the way to do it, for sure. Where can folks follow some of your adventures? Uh, you can find this on uh, Overland uh, underscore V1.0. Overland underscore V1.0. And check out this badass Lexus. Well, cool, man. I appreciate you walking us around. Yeah. I'm Rich Weiss. Rich, from and you're from? Winston-Salem. Winston-Salem, but you just moved to Winston-Salem. Yes. You said you're originally yes. from? North Potomac, Maryland. North Potomac, Maryland. And he has got a Tacoma that has got a pretty decked out looking system looks like here uh, pretty much all homemade now did you did you do this yeah yes i i did it what i what i have here is dan grex um uh, water purification system oh sweet okay i figured if he could use it in south america for two years and africa for for three then it's got to be good in america yeah right and i can use it wherever i i need it Look at that. And how many gallons? 16. That's all you need, right? Right. So the water comes in, goes uh -huh. through the, the purifier, 
and then it comes out. Goes How cool is that? Now, where's the tank at? Uh, the tank is in the front. Uh huh. Right. I can also fill from the side door. Oh, that's what that is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I have a sleeping platform here when I don't use the tent. The weather's beautiful. Yeah. Might as well use the tent, right? Right. So. How my, cool. My my goal is to uh, do the Trans America Trail in the in the summer. Yeah, this summer. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. What month? Uh, well, it depends on the weather in yeah. Colorado. So August and September is what I've found. Uh, September, it's starting to get cold and it starts to snow, but yeah. that's really cool, man. You're going to do it in your Tacoma? Yep, I'm going to do it in here. I've got, uh, so I was looking at the Prinsu racks, but I found these hook roads at mm -hmm. 269 on Amazon. I had bars on the cap, but I mounted the, the same rack. Yeah, sweet. And uh, I had this sitting in my garage for a few years, so I figured I might as well use that. I put two Plano um, rifle cases. Yep. Bolted them down. Very nice. Right. Very nice. And I see that you've been you've been using it. Yes, that was a Uari. That's an oopsie. Yeah. But it's okay. Yeah. We need right. those every now and then to remind yeah, us what well, we can't do. No, it's, it's part of the plan is to install the. Sliders. The, sk the sliders. Yeah. I've got skid plates, but I haven't. I bought it with skid plates and the bull bar. They were off and all rusty. So I scraped them down, painted them. Well, that's really cool. Well, listen, I really appreciate you taking the time oh, to show us pleasure. around. Thank and you, thank you for so watching much. the channel. All right, so I pulled these guys straight out of their dinner because this is an absolutely cool whip right here. Uh oh. And yeah. looks like it might no, have a little bit of more Chevy. power installed. A little Chevy 350 action? Yeah. That That's really cool. So tell us about it. It's a 1970. Started as an FJ40. Um, just to get the VIN and the title off of it. We extended the frame. It's Aqualoom tub and um, bed on it, fenders. Um, so you had to extend the frame. Yep. And then it's got a different tub on it. Now, is the rear, the rear is not stock? No, nothing on it. Nothing is stock. Uh, even the cab has been extended. Wow. And you um, did all the work? Aqualoom. Well, the, it's all built, or the uh, tub and the the bed's from Aqualoom. So oh, okay. So it's a company aluminum. you yeah. order it. Okay. For the for the body and stuff. Yeah. And the rest of the, the work the we frame, all do. We built it together. Everything else we built. So do you guys have a shop? Is this what you do, or just, just for fun? Ah, I love it, man. That is awesome. All caged on the inside. It's fully yeah. caged. It's got to be with an LS, right? Or 350? Is it an LS or is it's, it 350? It's, a, it's LS. All right, sweet. Three. I told you. It's a little I messy in there. It's got an LS in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excellent, man. 4L60 twin stick. That is cool. I really like it. So, what is uh, take it off road, beat it up at all? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, doesn't look it. That's the only reason I ask. It gets washed every time it goes off. Yeah, <laughs> I don't blame. You. If I put that much work into but it, I'd probably honestly, do the same. We, we it only has three thousand miles on it. We haven't really. Um, this is the farthest much we've ever been yeah. from home. It was eleven hour drive, six hundred miles. Oh wow. Yeah. Where, where's home? To the tank. Connecticut. 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 One hundred fifty miles to the tank. And how many gallons is the tank? Uh, it's only about a twelve or fifteen. It sloshes yeah. a lot, so it, yeah, I got gotcha. It tell. starts to suck air and yeah. pick up yeah. on us, but. Well, that's really cool. It's a constant work in progress like everything else. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to walk us around. No Thank problem. you guys. Where can everybody follow you at? Yeah, we don't have it in here. No chance. Even better. I love it. Me. Check out my man's chuck box. This is the chuck box right here. I like it. You got a bottle of wine, some paper towels, and a dual fuel stove. <laughs> Five gallons of water or three. You know, my off grid. My whole kitchen right there. There's a toilet paper. Oh, and that box goes all the way through and it's modular and it's got four. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So I'm actually reorganizing it. Look at that. Wine bottle opener. He's a wine guy. Yeah, I'm a wine guy. This guy's a wine guy. Good for you. Yeah, that's man. really cool. I yeah. like it. But that's the basic setup. Uh, What's then... the furthest you've been in it? I see you're from Florida. Oh yeah, I've been I've done two loops in the, of the U.S. No kidding, in yeah. this, huh? Yeah, yeah. How many miles? Uh, this has seventy thousand miles on it. And Perfect. I work from home. Sweet. Yeah.
Check him out with his hat, his shirt, and all that. Jack is ready to roll. So, you know, I'm looking for cool and unusual vehicles, and I think I found a cruel and unusual oh, vehicle. This on, thing man. here, dude. What's up, Check this guy out. Sure, Jailbreak over there. What's, What's up, man? What's up, brother? <laughs> I was drinking Budweiser, but I don't know. Where All right, now what's oh, it turned it into? Check these guys out. I'm 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 recently sponsored. Oh wait, them. no wait. I think I know because you deserve what every individual should enjoy regularly. There you go. That's what it's. Welcome to Sir <laughs> William. <laughs> 